Hey, Jim, I can't hear you. Can anybody? I don't, I don't know if anybody else, but I can't hear him. Thank you for saying that, Jim. I was trying to figure oh. out the same thing. I can't hear you, Jim. You. Okay, there, can you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's an echo. It's not. Okay, how are we doing? Can you still hear me? Yeah, that's good. Okay, all right. All these little technical glitches. Okay. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so we're gonna basically lie down. Just stand down. Have a block or book or something like that handy if you have one. And then extend your legs out straight. Tighten the kneecaps into the thighs, extend the heels. Have your big toe mounts and big toes touching and extend the inner heel, outer heel, and the big toe mounts. Take your hands, well first, lift the inner edge of the shoulder blades up and take the outer deltoids down into the floor. And then we'll take the hands into Namaskar. And then bring the arms overhead, extending, separate the palms, Open the palms and bring the upper arms toward the floor. So fully extend in both directions. Heels one way, arms, palms, fingers the other. And then bring your hands back to Namaskar with your chest. And then interlace your fingers, take the palms to the crown of your head, flip the palms over and extend the arms straight. And again, with the elbows straight, take the upper arms toward the floor. And then return to Namaskar at your chest. Change the interlace of your fingers. Bring the palms to the crown of your head. Flip the palms over and press your arms straight again. And again, bringing the upper arms toward the floor. And then again to Namaskar. And now we'll take the block or book. If you have it, have it at this middle width if possible. Press your palms into the block as if you're uh, pressing your palms together. Extend the hands, arms block up, and then bring the arms overhead.
Okay, and then come back to your chest. <clears throat> Take a few breaths. And then once again, same thing. Extend the arms up toward the ceiling. Really get the elbows extended and then bring the arms overhead. I'm gonna fuss with this a little bit because I'm still getting that echo. Not sure why. Okay, I think that should be better. Okay, and then bring your hands back to your chest. And come up to a seated posture. So give me a thumbs up, can you hear me? Okay, I know I can tell there's still a bit of an echo. Um, I'm gonna try to figure that out. Okay, I think the echo is gone. All right, reasonably good. It's not perfect. I can still hear something, but I guess we'll see how it goes. Okay. All right, where was I? Better, uh, okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, I want to kind of keep this as a fairly comfortable uh, class, uh, not too much strenuous effort. <clears throat> All right, so sit upright, perhaps on a bolster or some such thing. Bear with me just another moment because I'm still getting an echo. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's bothering me. All right, let's see. That's better. Seems like it is. Okay, so if you have a belt, have that handy. And I'm going to sit with my back to the camera here now. And I want to do the arm position for. Uh, Uh, Gomu Kasan. Oh, I forget the Sanskrit what we're doing. But basically, we're going to bring the arms up overhead. We're going to take the right arm back and extend up and catch like so. And you can use the belts if you wish. Like so. If you can't reach. So sit upright either on a height or in some comfortable position. Bring the arms up overhead. Take the right arm down. Extend back with the left and interlace the finger. And then gently release. Bring the arms back up. Take the left down. Bring the right back and up, interlace, and extend that left elbow up. Oftentimes on this side, it's harder, so you may need to use a, uh, a belt on this side. And then we 
release. Bring the arms back up. And then back down to the chest. Okay, so let's do this then with the uh, lower body position. So, We take the right foot back like so, and then we bring the left foot back and you overlap the left knee on top of the right. And speaking for myself, I'm really feeling my piriformis here. This will really stretch out that piriformis muscle that connects from the outside of the, the thigh. And then sit upright. And then bring the arms up again. Take the right arm back and down. The left arm goes back and up and interlace. Lunar castle, cow face pose. And release. Bend the legs out into my mountain. And then to the second side, you bring the left leg and foot back first, overlap the right on top. Sit upright. I have to say, I'm really feeling that piriformis on both sides. I hadn't, I hadn't realized how tight this was going to be. I've got to do this more often. Bring the arms up. Left arm goes down, right arm goes back and up. Catch the fingers if you can, or use the belt, and sit upright. Gomukasa. And release back and send the legs forward. I'm feeling like I'd like to do that one more time on each side. That felt pretty good. Well, I see some dribble here. Okay. The right goes back first, the left overlaps. Sit upright. Extend the arms up. The right goes down, the left goes back and up. Now face folks, go on past. And then release. And Nasana, the left foot comes back. The right foot overlaps on top. And square up the hips and shoulders. Bring the arms up, the left arm goes down, the right arm goes back and up. And then works, send the legs forward. Again in Dandasan. Sit upright in the stiff bones. Let's do one seated forward bend here. Kneecaps firm into the thighs, extend the heels forward. Bring the arms up, inhale, exhale, extend forward. Use a belt or catch your feet or your legs. Look forward, arch the low back, extend the navel and sternum with an inhale, and then with the exhale, extend and fold into the forward bend. Let the head and neck release.
in here in here in here in here in here in here in So just go right into your demo. Okay. Okay. Open the palms onto the floor. Open the heels as if they're pressing into the floor. Kneecaps drawn into the thighs. Elbows extended straight. Body takes a sharp V-like structure. Allow the head and neck to release. And then walk into a standing forward bend. Again, allow the head and neck to release. And then gently inhale and then release. Okay. So we'll take Tadasan in the center of your mat. Lift the ball of the foot, lengthen and widen. Same with the other foot, lengthen and widen. Drag the kneecaps into the thighs. Internal rotation with the skin and muscles of the thighs. A little lift in the front pelvic bone, a little tucking of the tailbone, and a little bit of a movement back at the floating ribs. Skin and muscles of the buttocks move down. Torso lifts up, chest open. We'll start with hands on hips. Reach the elbows back toward each other. Then keeping all of that, take your hands back to your sides. Bring the palms together and now let's go. Press the palms together evenly. And then extend the arms up overhead. Separate the palms so you can get the elbows really straight. And then you can bring the palms back together. And then bring the hands back to your own skull. And now take your block again, or book, whatever you might have, in that same second wide position, or whatever you may have. <laughs> and then we're going to extend the arms up overhead again into Urdhva Hastasana. So now don't grip with your pinky. You know, I found myself immediately trying to just, let me just hold that with my pinky. It's a lot easier. But the idea here is to actually make yourself hold the block just with the pressure of your palm into the block. It's kind of hard, especially then to keep the elbows straight. And then come back down. Take a couple breaths. Okay, and then we do again. Extend the arms up in Urdhva Hastasana. Press the sides of the block with your palms. Get those elbows as straight as you can. Bring the upper arms back to or behind your ears as best you can. And then back down. All right. Put the block aside for the moment. And take your belt, if you have. You don't have a, a belt, you just you know, pretend. But if you have a belt, put it into a loop. We want the loop to be fairly narrow so that when you put it through, put your arms through, it keeps your arms uh, no more than shoulder distance apart. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to end up doing, this is a little too wide for me. So I'm going to. Because eventually we're going to put the block back between our hands if we do this. The first time through, like so. Now, I have the, the strap just above my elbow. 
For some people, that's going to be a problem and you might need to have it below the elbow, but you'll see when we get there. So go ahead and set up your loop. And then once you have your loop set up, extend your hands in front of you and moving your arms apart so that you've really got the belt stretched taut. And then we bring the arms up overhead again in Urdva Hastasa. Now this is so much more comfortable, isn't it? I mean, you can really get your, you can see how you can really get your elbows straight now. This really helps. And it really it brings a nice structure to the shoulder. So this is a really nice way to do Urdva Hastasa. And then come back down. And now we take our blocks. Same basic structure. We're going to not hold the block with your thumbs or pinkies. We're holding the block only with the pressure of our palms. And then we bring the arms up overhead. So this allows for a very nice structure. The block, the belt together create a good alignment with the shoulders and at the same time pull extension through the elbows. And then you can just work on bringing your arms back. And then it's Okay, I think that's good. Put that stuff aside. So now, if you have a wall, we'll, we'll make use of it. If you don't have a wall, then you're just gonna pretend. So the idea here is to stand facing the wall. I'm gonna move my mat. And stand just a few inches away from the wall, just maybe three inches from the wall. Palms are on the wall. And again, if you don't have the wall, you're just pretending. You're just, you can just stand imagining there's a wall. It's, it's fine. <clears throat> but if you have a wall, it's nice. And later you can practice this with the wall if you wish. So now with your palms on the wall, use the feedback of the wall to help you really get a nice upright Extended to dasam. <laughs> Kneecaps firm into the thighs. Now we're going to move only through the ankles. So you're going to pretend that your, your body is like a plank of wood with a joint at the ankle. So you, that's the only thing that moves. So you're going to move through the ankles to put your forehead on the wall. And then expand the hands all the way up as far as you can. And then go up onto your tiptoes. Actually, I have to be a little bit further away from the wall to do this. Go up onto your tiptoes. Get your fingertips as high as you can. Now stick your hands, your palms, your fingers to the wall. Yeah, okay. And then lower your heels while trying to keep your hands as high up on the wall as you can. So slowly extend the heels down until they touch the floor. And then pausing there with the palms pressing into the wall, extend the heels down as if you're gonna push them through the floor. Now keeping your forehead on the wall, bring your hands back down to shoulder level. And then push away from the wall. And again, just stand there in your Tadasana. And then we'll do again. So using the feedback of your hands on the wall, 
on a nice upright Tadasana, and then rotating only through the ankles, bring your forehead to the wall, and then extend the arms up as high up as you can. Go up onto your toes, and then stick your palms to the wall, and then extend your heels back to the floor while keeping the palms up as high as you can. Once your heels touch the floor, really extend them down while extending the palms up. And keeping your forehead on the wall, slide the hands back down and then push away from the wall. And then step out and just take a few breaths. All right, so then we'll take Tadasana again. And we'll do Eagle Pose, Garudasana. So let's sweep the arms up now into Urva Hastasana. And then we're going to sweep them down and bring the right under the left. Wrap the arms around each other to the extent that you can, moving toward putting your palms back together. Lift the elbows up. I really feel that in my somewhat injured left shoulder. And then take the wrists out over the elbows. And then release gently and sweep the arms back up. And then left under right. Wrap the arms around each other to the extent that you can, moving towards bringing the palms together. Lift the elbows. Take the wrists out over the elbows. And then gently release, weaving the arms back up in the Urdhva Hastasana. Once again, right on your left. Lift the elbows, take the wrists out over the elbows. Now we're going to stand on one foot, if you can. Stand on just your right foot. And if you can do so, you can go into the full pose by wrapping the left around the right. And then you squat down. And as you squat down, keep your shoulders over your hips. Don't fold forward. Garudasana, the eagle pose. And then come up. Release and bring the arms back up into Garudasana. And then left on the right. Wrap the arms around to the extent that you can, moving towards palms together, elbows lift, wrists out over the elbows, standing on the left foot. So if, if you can just practice standing on one foot, that's good. If you want to, you can try wrapping that foot around the left leg and then squatting down. And then come back up, release, sweep the arms up, bring the arms down into Namaste, into Tadasana. Okay. So I'm going to turn around. Actually, I'll do this from the side. I think uh, this way we'll have good visibility. So standing in Tadasan, we're going to then interlace the fingers behind, straighten the elbows, extending through the elbows, and then lift your hands and arms off your buttocks.
and you release, change the interlace of your fingers so that obviously you can make fingers on top. And then again, extend through the elbows, straightening the arms, and lift the hands off the legs. And release. Go back to the first uh, interlace. Separate your feet a little, several inches. Again, extend straight through the elbows. Inhale, exhale, pull it forward in a forward bend, and then bring the arms up and over. And then inhale and come back up carefully. Change the interlace of your fingers again. Nice upright tadasana. Extend straight through the elbows with the arms. Inhale, exhale, fold forward. Bring the arms up and over. And then inhale and come back up. Bring the hands back in front into the sky. Bring the arms overhead and get rid of And then again to down the sky. And then the edges. So just watch for a moment. So this next thing is uh, Hashima Namaskar. Uh, Hashima is the west. And the back body is the west of the body. So we're going to see if we can bring the hands together, the palms together in Namaskar on your back. So see what you can do. See where you can get with this. If you uh, can do one arm, that's good. You can, you can practice for one arm at a time. If you can't get really anywhere, then you can catch your elbows. Okay. So stand towards the back of your mat with whatever per version of this you can get in Tadasa with your feet a few inches apart. And then take a big step forward with your right shoulder. Square up your hips and shoulders facing forward. Inhale, exhale, extend, and fold into a forward bend. Rubotanasana. Now, keeping your hands in that position, if you can, inhale and come back up and come back to Tadasana at the back of your mat. Turn your right foot out just a bit and take a big step with your left foot. Square up your hips and shoulders. Inhale, exhale, extend, and fold into the forward bend again. And then inhale and come up. And gently release your arms from them. And again, bring your arms into Urbhasthasana. And then to Namaskar. And then to Tadasana. All right. So then we'll go to once again down facing dog, Aramukha Shanasana. So arms and legs straight, palms open on the floor, heels open and extending toward the floor, sharp V like structure, head and neck release.
and then take the knees down, knees apart, big toes touch, extend back, sitting on your heels, forehead down. Extend the arms forward, however, and palms open and pressing down into the floor. So your arms may still be off the floor. So this is not a completely restorative pose. We're maintaining that upper body shoulder structure. And then keeping your hands and feet where they are, lift right back up into downward dog. And then again into downward facing hero, Adamuka Virasana. All right, so go ahead and come up from there to a comfortable seated posture. And I'm gonna demonstrate the next thing. It's sort of my little show off pose. Um, it's very hard to do, but I think it's, it's good to try. And uh, even if you can't do, it's, it's still uh, something to work towards. So it's like this. We're gonna transition from downward dog into chaturanga dasana. Now, if need be, you can go to the floor. That's fine. But the idea here then is to go from this position to downward dog and watch how I do. And then going back to that other one. Like so. so now the typical way that we go in that transition is like this. We lift up and then push back. So what I want to do is avoid that. And instead of lifting up, I want to push back like so, and then come forward in that same way. So it's harder. Give it a try. So start, let's go ahead and start lying down, either in Chaturanga or in a position to where you're ready to go into Chaturanga Dandasana, four angle plank pose. And then, do that transition into downward facing dog, seeing if you can slide back as if somebody's pulling you back by the sides. And then do the reverse, go back to Chaturanga in that sliding forward position. And give it a few tries on your own and just see how it goes. Really trying to not push up at the beginning, but to just slide back as if you're being pulled back by the thighs. It's hard, that's a, that's a good effort. Okay, and after your next one, just rest there lying on the floor for a few breaths.
and then come up from there and just begin uh, take a comfortable cross-legged or seated posture and i'll demonstrate the next the next thing which is chaturanga dandasana or in the plank pose so i'm going to use a prop here the bolster and i'm going to show a different version of it as well we lie over the bolster like so with my hands is in position as if I'm going to do downward dog. So this is a good way to, to practice and begin to get the hang of Chaturanga, which is obviously a very difficult pose. So the idea here <clears throat> is I have my kneecaps firm into my thighs and I'm extending my heels back. My quadriceps are firm. My body is uh, in a plank-like structure parallel to the floor. And I'm looking down and a little bit forward. My palms are open and pressing into the floor. So I'm engaging with the floor, not to lift myself off, but to kind of get that feel as if I'm going to. So this is the basic structure. Then we can practice by lifting off just a bit. So that's how we can work on this. Now you can use uh, a bolster like that, or you can use a block or anything else that you can find that's reasonably comfortable and allows the structure. So I, I kind of like this, it's a little more uh, specific to the pose and it's giving me just the support that I would need. And then you practice by lifting off just a bit and then you can release back on top. So give that a try, Get a prop that will go on your chest and lie on that prop with your elbows tucked in at the sides, your palms open and pressing down into the floor. Tighten the kneecaps into the thighs and extend your heels back. Internal rotation with the skin and muscles of your thighs. Really, we go through all the uh, structural elements that we do with Tadasana here. So the uh, heels extend back, kneecaps firm into the thighs, internal rotation with the skin and muscles of the thighs, the uh, floating ribs lift toward the ceiling, the muscles of the skin and muscles of the buttocks move toward the hamstrings, the inner edge of the shoulder blades down toward the floor, and your gaze is down in a little. Forward. Okay, and then rest. Be at ease. Okay, do again. Take the hands into downward dog position. <clears throat> Tighten the kneecaps into the thighs, extend the heels back. Internal rotation with the skin muscles of the thighs. Loading ribs lift, tailbone down, skin and muscles of the buttocks toward the hamstrings, palms open and pressing down into the floor. And then give it a try where you just lift off your prop. See how that feels. Can you hover just off the floor? And then release and just be at ease. Let's try it one time without the prop. And just see how it feels. So, no prop, just stretch out prone on the floor. Take your hands into downward dog position. Turn the toes under, tighten the kneecaps into the thighs. Internal rotation with the skin and muscles of the thighs. Keep the elbows tucked in at the sides. Looking down and just a bit forward, see if you can lift off the floor. Hovering like a plank of wood, just a few inches off the floor, fully parallel to the floor. And release. And just rest here for a few breaths.
All right, we'll come up from here and we'll head towards Shavasana. So gather up what you want for your Shavasana. Some height under your head is good. To get that all organized, we'll do a couple of final things and then we'll go into our chalansa. We'll stretch out on the floor. Once again, in Sukta Tadasana, supine mountain pose. So the big toes and big toe mounds are touching. The heels can be a little separated. Extend the heels, bring the kneecaps into the thighs, press the back of the knees, thighs into the floor. Lift using your elbows, the inner edge of the shoulder blades away from the floor, taking the outer shoulders down into the floor. Upper arms are externally rotated, hands on the floor, palms up. And then hug the right knee into the chest. Interlace your fingers around that knee. Draw the right knee into the chest and extend the left heel away. Release, move through Suptatanasana. Bring the left knee up, change the interlace of the fingers. Hug that left knee into the chest as you extend the right knee all the way. Shoulder blades evenly on the floor. Sacrum left and right evenly on the floor. Release, back to Sukta Tadasan. One more time to each side. Hug the right knee into the chest. Extend the left heel away. And again to the second side, moving through Sukha Tadasana, changing the interlace of the fingers, hugging the left knee into the chest, extending the right heel. And release, return to Sukha Tadasana. Extend your heels again, lift the inner edge of the shoulder blades, outer shoulders into the floor, upper arms turned out, palms facing up. And then let your feet fall out to the sides. Let your legs roll out to the sides. Let go of all effort, let your body sink into the floor. Take a little inventory. Are there any areas where you feel out of sync or out of balance or out of symmetry? Make any little adjustments so that you feel yourself, your buttocks, your sacrum, your shoulder blades, your shoulder, the back of your head, your feet, all of them evenly symmetrically resting down into the floor. And after you've gone through that little inventory, just let go. You can leave your hands on the floor, palms up, or you can bring them to your torso, palms down as you may wish, whichever brings you a more settled, calm place. As you let your weight release in the floor, take away any effort, in muscles and skin. Let go into the floor, let your breath quiet. Let it move toward a place of stillness. 
and let your mental activity move with the breath to that same quietness, that same stillness. And then take a few slightly deeper breaths and the words back in the third of the Or just stay in Shavasana if you may wish. If you want, feel free. But otherwise, put your eyes open, bring your hands to your torso. One leg at a time, bend your knees and roll to your side. Stay cooled up for a few breaths. When you come up, keep your neck at ease. Bring the crown of your head up last. So you use some arm strength to push the seated posture. All right. Thanks for coming. Namaste. All right. 
Good night. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. Sorry for those little technical glitches. Next week, it'll be better. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. See you, Jim. Good night. Good night. Thank you.